Howdy. Today I'm doing this video without my glasses because they ain't helping me anyway. My other glasses broke Saturday early afternoon and I took them to the place and I'm not going to get them back for, well, probably by the end of this week. So I can't see much. I can see distances with these glasses here which are five years old because my prescription changed just that much. So I can see distances but I can't read anything and I have to enlarge everything in order to be able to see the computer. But I can't enlarge this so what's the point of <laughs> wearing my glasses for the video? And my wife likes my eyes like this anyway so I'm good. So today's story is going to start back in 1983. I was working at a music store because I wanted to be a songwriter. I had met a lot of musicians, I knew some of the people at the music store, and it was a fun gig except for the fact that it didn't pay much because it was family owned. So I needed more money. You know, who hasn't been there? And so what I did is I went to an employment agency and I had to take a typing test and I typed 52 words a minute. That was on typewriters. Now think about that because back then, you know, you had to basically erase things or at least at home I had a cartridge that I could slide it in there and it would do a kind of a whiteout type of thing and then you went all over it. But typing was a little harder to do than it is now. Um, at one point I was typing close to 150 words a minute on my computer. Now I'm probably down to around 120. But hey, it happens. Anyway, I typed 52 words a minute and they gave me a math test and I aced it. So I went home and it was only a few hours before I get a call and it says um, from the employment agency, there's someone who wants to meet you. And it's the hospital. And so they tell me the name of the hospital. I'm not going to mention the name right now. I had never been in the hospital. I was a military kid. I was born in a hospital on the base, so I guess that counts, <laughs> on a base in Texas, but I'd never been in a hospital. And so I had all these ideas of what it was going to be like, and it was a little freaky, but you know, I'm a guy, and I was brave enough, and so I went ahead, and I went for the interview, and the next day, I got the job. So in two days, I actually had a new job working at a hospital. And my starting salary, just to show you what things were like, was $4.92 an hour. <laughs> I was making $3.75 at the music store. So to me, this was a big deal. Anyway, over the course of time, I showed that I had some kind of proficiency at doing the job. Um, I turned out to be the number one billing person. I started out in an inpatient billing and I was the number one person mainly because I would take stuff from other people and do their stuff before working hours and none of them ever noticed it until a number started coming out and everyone was wondering how I was doing it and I kept my mouth shut at the time. So then I get promoted to uh, assistant supervisor of outpatient billing and emergency room admissions. So now I basically have a couple of different careers going on. And I have some people who report to me and then I report it to the supervisor. And I took my time to learn what every other department did except the scanning department. Because back then, you actually had a department that scanned everything. That's all they did is they just put stuff on a thing and they scanned it. Oh, that was boring as sin. I know that because I actually oversaw that department for a week when the supervisor went out because the vice president of the department seemed to like me. So <laughs> I got to do a whole lot of different things. Anyway, they didn't have anywhere to promote me at a certain point because basically all the supervisors were relatively young. I mean, I think the oldest might have been 44, 45 years old. Where is she going? Where are any of them going? So I'm kind of stuck. Meanwhile, I'm also stuck at a salary level. I have now gone from $4.92 to, at almost four years, I think I was at $7.50. And that's still not great. I wasn't, basically, I was not doing well monetarily. I'd had a car accident at the end of 1986, so I had to buy a new car. I'd never had a car payment before. And that totally threw my budget off. So now I've got a car payment. I'm running out of money. My parents have moved out of town, so I can't even go over there to eat dinner three times a week like I was doing when they were in town. And I needed a new job. 
I needed a new job at the same time that I was going to move in an apartment with a friend of mine, which would have saved some money. And he lost his job just like two weeks before we were going to move in together. So he was looking for a new job. And I said, you know what? I'll look for a new job also because I really hadn't entertained the idea, although I needed one. So I applied for this position. It was a regional director of a medical billing company. And I got the interview and I got the job. My friend didn't get the job, so he didn't end up moving in the department. I ended up moving in the apartment by myself, like I needed two bedrooms. <laughs> it was a nice-looking apartment, but it turned out not to be energy efficient. We'll just say that and move on. Anyway, I get this job, and the responsibilities were that I had an office, the main office, right in town where I had something like 20 to 30 people who reported to me. And then I had five satellite offices in smaller towns, uh, basically up north to the east, nothing south, southern tier. So I had, you know, these areas that I had to drive to. And so the vice president of the company, because they were based out of uh, Lake George, which means nothing to a lot of you folks, but it's basically two and a half hours from here. And so he drove down to take me to this one hospital that was way up north. Um, it was going to be in the Messina, New York area. No, I got that wrong. I can't remember where it was. It was just way up north. Anyway, this is where the story gets interesting. This is kind of the point of the story I'm getting to. So we're driving on the way up to this hospital. And he says to me, you know, I just want to tell you, I almost didn't hire you for this job. Now, I'm in the guy, car with the guy, and he tells me this. And I said, oh, really? Because what am I supposed to say? He says, yeah. He said, you know, you had more experience than anyone else I interviewed. You had great qualifications, and I checked your references, and they were great. So you were heads and head, you know, above everybody else. The problem that I worried about is that in some of the outlying areas, I wasn't sure how they would react to you. And I said, what do you mean? Being stupid, but I had a feeling I knew where this was going. He said, well, I wasn't sure how they would react to a black person coming in in a leadership role in these places because there's almost no black people living in any of these areas. And I didn't want to offend any of our clients, and I really wasn't sure how it was going to be handled. Yet, I decided to go ahead because you were the most qualified and give you the job. Now, I know he was trying to compliment me, but think about that for a minute. This is what happens a lot for people of color who go in for jobs and don't get them, but aren't told they didn't get the job because they're minority. They're basically told, well, you don't have the quite, you know, quite the qualifications we need. And it's a lot of bunk. There's a lot of studies out there. I've got some videotapes uh, <laughs> of, of some of the studies, although they're in an older format now, so I, I don't even know how I would have ever played them if I needed to. But this happens all the time. But I got the job in spite of him telling me this. And over the course of two years, I did well. As a matter of fact, it turns out, if any of you watched the bowling tournament video that I did a couple of weeks ago, it turned out almost the same way. I went to these outlying areas and people loved me for whatever reason. <laughs> I mean, even doctors who I had been told were going to be really difficult, I got along with every single doctor I had to interact with. It went well. And so, you know, it was a great job for two years until the company started having certain issues. They were probably one of those types of companies who, when they first started in, I guess, 1976 or 1977, they were way ahead of the curve because they had a computerized system and they would have uh, all these different clients across the state to batch stuff to Lake George. But by 19, let's see, when did I get that job? 87. By 1989, there was a lot of people who were able to scan stuff in or type it into their own computers and actually even buy their own software. It was just a different animal. So the company was, you know, really getting ready to be on its way out. I think within three or four years, it was it was gone entirely. But at that time, you know, early on, they were cutting edge and it was a good gig. I mean, I got to drive a lot and I did really well, but I thought how interesting it was that he felt that he had to tell me this story. And I tell this story 
for a couple of reasons. One, because there are going to be people who are going to say they're shocked that someone would basically come out and tell you that they almost didn't hire you because you were a minority. But two, this is one of those kind of things where I've always said that, and I say this to a lot of younger black people, um, we cannot afford to just be equals of someone else because you never know if the employer is is going to decide not to hire you because the other person is the same. You need to be better. You need to always try to be better. And you know what? My numbers have always proven that. As a consultant, because I'm now a healthcare finance consultant, I always like to over-deliver as much as possible. And there's not a lot of people who are independent consultants who can say that they helped the hospital increase their revenue by $730 million in one year. But I did that. <laughs> Just because I know, once again, that I am setting a standard for people later on, you know, who may follow me into this career. That's a tough career. There's not a whole lot of us. Trust me on that one. So anyway, I just wanted to tell that story um, because when it happened and two, I thought it was an interesting little thing. Let me know your thoughts on it. And I hope y'all have a great day. And I hope I have my new glasses by the end of the weekend. You take care.